Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance, and I have a special guest today. It's Mike McGinnis from the Open Apple Podcast and also Drop Three Inches. And Mike, tell us uh, why we're here. Well, the actual special guest is this Revision Zero Apple II that no one has been able to diagnose or fix yet, and so we thought we would give it a try today. Um, and if it doesn't work, then you'll take it to Kansas Fest and we'll let John Morris, is that his name? Yeah. 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 We'll let John Morris have a run of it because I hear he can fix almost anything. So anyway, hello. And what's, what's actually, what are the symptoms? Oh, uh, so when we turn it on, um, you'll get a screen full of trash and the repeated beeping um, noise. You know, normally when you hit the power, it beeps once and then goes to the boot up sequence. This just beeps over and over unless you hold the reset key down and then it gets quiet and you let go and it starts again. We'll, we'll show you. All right, sounds this, good. Oh, by the way, this is uh, serial number 5025, so it's in the later run of the revision zeros. I think there were like 6,000 made or something. And the board number is 5206. It does not have the original power supply. I think most of the parts are original except a couple of the uh, dynamic RAM chips, which I had to replace because when we pulled them up from the board, the, the legs just disintegrated. So those are not original, but everything else is, I think. so. Cool. Yeah, let's uh, let's get started. All right, we'll plug it in and see what happens. Awesome. No, nothing need. yet. So, wow, that, look at that screen. Well, that, now, does that look? Yeah, it's a. Um, do you think it's the actual monitor that's? Well, I flaky. I, I think maybe the video connection is a little bit loose back here. I'm not sure. Oh, that's um, interesting. But when we hit the reset. But that and is the Apple II beep. When we hold it down, right. it behaves. And we also, I also, um, which I guess we'll see those in a minute, we have the original drives that were purchased for this thing. Um, and whether these, these are plugged in or not, doesn't matter. Hmm. When I let go. All right. So Mike, how did you get this machine? Uh, there was a woman whose husband was somebody like us and had a basement full of stuff and he passed away and she didn't know what to do with any of it um, and we're talking like a basement your size filled with this stuff with deck equipment he had like chess games like electronic chess stuff he was really into that just everything she had no idea what it was what it was worth or how to get rid of it and you know he had died like the year or so before so she was still pretty broken up about it, and uh, she kind of just sent me this list of like, here's all the stuff that I've found in the basement so far, can you tell me what to do with it? And so I helped her sort stuff out, clean it up, get it on eBay, and, and get it out of there, uh, which wow. she really appreciated. Yeah. And as a thank you, she gave me this. Cool, that's thing. really cool. And uh, one of these drives here has got a really low serial number that was bought like a couple months after this was mm -hmm. so um yeah I, I was very appreciative so did it did it ever work or she said it did yeah. but you've never actually I, it did not work when i got it okay. you know, it, it was she, this has been sitting in had been sitting in their basement for quite some time yeah so, so it might have been like 30 years ago was the last time it actually right yeah. really worked We first removed all of the chips from the board and then cleaned the motherboard with a combination of 90% isopropyl alcohol as well as some contact cleaner. And then we also tried swapping out all of the chips from my Apple II Plus, but nothing seemed to make a difference. Mike and I are going to use a logic probe to try to test some of the pins on the Apple II board. And this is a model LP560 in case you're curious. And what I've done is I've hooked this up to five volts from the Apple II, and to do that, I just tied into the bottom speaker pin here, which is plus five volts. And then for ground, I've tied into the rightmost pin 
on the auxiliary video connector up here. And you can see that I, rather than trying to attach the alligator clips directly to the pins and, and risk shorting them, I've just used these little header wires here just to make it a little bit safer. So if we take the Logic Probe and we just touch it to, say, the ground line on the 6502, you can see that it beeps. And then we can just go down the pins and test to see which ones are working. So for example, the next one, here's the ready line, so that's high. Here is the clock. So if both lights are lit up and then it's blinking with a high pitched noise, that means that it's a square wave that's greater than 200 kilohertz. So that's good. And then let's go over to the other side of the board here. Pin 40 on the 6502 is the reset line. So if I just hold that down and then I hit reset, you can see it goes low and now it's back high again. Now that I've hit reset, it's doing that thing where it's continually beeping and starting over and over again and again. So now we can see if we can figure out what's going on from any of these other pins. So for example, pin 34 is the read write line. And you can see that every time it does a reset, then there's a transition for the read write line. And then here are the data pins for the 6502. So this is D0, D1, D2, D3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is now address line A15, so this would be the high bit of the address line. To test all the solder pads on this Apple II motherboard, I'm going to try a technique suggested by Alan Green on the Facebook page, and that was to lay down a piece of aluminum foil on top of a soft cloth, and then with the motherboard on top of it, just press the positive contact onto each pin and make sure that it makes contact with the solder pad on the bottom. And I, you can see I've got the black lead hooked up to the aluminum foil. And then I'm just gonna test each one of these pins one after another to make sure that I'm getting contact. All right, so here's the Rev Zero Apple II looking considerably more disheveled. Um, we didn't get it working. Mike, what do you <laughs> what do you have to say? Uh, well, we, we did a lot of troubleshooting, at least as much as we knew how to do. We did a bunch of uh, signal reading with your Logic Probe and um, the voltmeter. Still the same results. We swapped out the keyboard. Um, power supply. Power supply. We pulled RAM chips. We reset stuff. The CPU we know is working because uh, we checked pin 40 and 37 and got the right signals out of that. Yeah. Um, we know that we're getting some sort of auto start. Some sort of auto start because when we, when we put the uh, disk two card in slot six, it does. You know, the it tries to do the re the auto reset. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, villages have been burned and. Uh, mil millions are dead, and well, at least one Apple II Plus over there got sacrificed to, to test all this out. But uh, I think I think we're going to have to defer to to uh, uh, higher minds than ours. Um, maybe John will have some thoughts, and I'm going to yeah. head home at this point. But I'm leaving this here. And He's giving able, up. I appreciate your uh, help and and some of the ideas, um, but ultimately we're still kind of where we were before. You power it up and. You know, I mean, it still does the same thing, so. All right, so Mike and I were unable to fix his Rev Zero Apple II. So hopefully next episode, we'll have a fix for the problem and I'll let you know what happened. So until then, thanks for watching. If I see this on eBay in an hour, I'm going to be real angry. <laughs> no, I'm kidding.